Well, howdy there, folks, and welcome into today's video. Hope you guys are doing great out there as always. We've got to talk about where the stock market's going next, what's about to happen. I'm going to share with you a very scary chart during the course of this video, essentially, okay? Um, this chart is going to be, um, I mean, when I look at this chart, I say it's like a ticking time bomb, okay? We don't know when this chart is going to go off, but we know it will go off. And uh, so we're going to talk about that, all right? I'm going to. We're also going to talk about kind of where the market's at forward PE wise, kind of how I'm thinking about it, where stocks are valued. We're going to look at price to earnings growth, how I'm thinking about that, the market in general. Uh, Coach Brian, one of our you know most phenomenal coaches in the private group, he actually uh, sent over a chart. He thought it would be interesting for for folks to kind of see and hear from his perspective. So yeah, we got a lot to get into in this video, guys. Hope you enjoy this as always. If you don't mind, smash that thumbs up. That helps us out huge in the YouTube algorithm and with this YouTube channel in general. I never take it for granted. I thank you guys so much for doing that. If you want to subscribe, if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down there and you can also put the notification bell on if you want to be notified every time I drop a video, which is almost every day during the week. Not really on weekends, but during the week, man, uh, I'm here for you guys and, and we, we post some content. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this as always. If you're looking to apply for the private stock group, you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, anything like that, we have that. That will be the pinned comment down there. All right, guys, so let's get into this. So first off here today, I mean, it's another day in which the Russell's down, small, small stocks are getting hit. Meanwhile, it looks like a bit of a flight to safety. Look at the Dow 30, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Look at that. It's up 0.41% today. So it looks like another one of those days that's, um, you know, a kind of a flight to safety. Let me see how much I'm up or down today across the board in my accounts because I think when I woke up this morning, I was down $70,000 or so. But let me see where I'm at right now at the moment yeah how much am i down how much am i down right now i'm down seventy three thousand one hundred and seventy seven dollars and sixty one cents at the moment so i'm getting hit in the market here today man it's not a good day for jeremy today down seventy three thousand dollars no no bueno no bueno okay but I think part of it is I definitely own a good amount of small stocks. And just, yeah, there's just some stocks getting hit today, man. It's just the way it is. I mean, uh, I don't know what's, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, is Tesla down? Yeah, Tesla's down 1.52%. Corsair is down. A lot of, just a lot of stocks down today. Um, except maybe like some of the big techs. Maybe it's just a money movement into a lot of those different types of stocks. I, oh, yeah, I, I, I took a screenshot here right before we started of just, this was on Yahoo Finance. It was just like, stocks I've looked at recently. Um, and look at the stocks I've looked at recently. Oh my gosh, all of them are getting hit today pretty much other than Palantir. So uh, good good for you Palantir folks, man. But outside of that, everything's getting hit today. Look, Corsair's down. Uh, I did buy some tattoo. It was in the 18s today. I had to buy another thousand shares of tattoo today. Uh, Walgreens is down. G, uh, GGTTF is down a little bit. I don't know if that actually reflects the um, current price because sometimes uh, with some of the smaller OTC stocks, it, it actually reflects a next day on some of these services. Neo's down 2.77% today. Look at Tesla. My Esla's down today. GameStop's down over 7% today. So yeah, I mean, just so, oh, from the stocks I've looked at recently and Yahoo Finance, some of them are down, okay? Uh, so that, that that's a fun stuff, okay? Uh, we got some really good news. Then we got to get into a lot of these metrics. Then we got to get into, you know, Brian's chart. And then we got to get into a scary chart, okay? Scary, scary. So first off, this is some really good news, okay? So if you're looking for some good news, I got some good news for you today, okay? Look at this. Caesars Entertainment CEO says business convention outlook for Las Vegas looks extremely strong extremely strong it's not just like it's looking good not even it's looking great it's looking extremely strong okay that is the type of word choice i like to hear business groups are wanting to come back we've just got to make sure we can accommodate them caesar's entertainment ceo says okay also um basically matt maddox win ceo he was on uh kramer last night and um I saw he was on there and I was like, oh, I got I to gotta definitely check out that. So I went ahead and I, I watched that and it was unfortunate because, you know, all the, like the big publications and mainstream media, all they were talking about is this whole like, you know, employees, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, they must have talked about some numbers in there or something. There must have been some good stuff. And um, so basically what he said, he said uh, business is returning quite rapidly he said they're already starting to get a lot of convention business set up for 2021 this year. This year. 
Never mind 2022, he says, are they already booking a lot? He said, uh, just last week, he said, they booked five big conferences, conventions, whatever you want to call it, at the whim in one week. So business is getting ready to return. I've always said like the summertime is going to be packed again in Vegas. And then you're going to start seeing the convention conference business start to come back in the wintertime, in my opinion. And that will start to build. I think regular folks, um, you know, a person that wants to go with his girlfriend or boyfriend or the bachelorette parties and all that fun stuff, that's coming back this summer, man. And the people that just want to come out with their friends and have a good time and start living life again, that's that's already starting to happen, by the way, but that's really going to play out this summer. I've always said that. And then the wintertime, convention business starts. And then 2022, Vegas is going to be back to normal, in my personal opinion. And everything I'm seeing from the CEOs out there lines up that way. I saw the planet numbers that they came out with in the month of March and their commentary. Everything is lining up exactly how I thought it would, but maybe even, dare I say, a little bit better than I actually had anticipated. So, you know, this is great news across the board. So yeah, if you're looking for some great news, man, that's some great news right there. All right. Now, I want to look at a few things uh, in Yardini research, and then we'll get into Brian's stuff, and then we'll get into a scary chart, okay? So what we're looking at in Yardini research, I always like to look at them for um, like forward P metrics and some other metrics in the market I'll look at sometimes. They, they just do a really good job of covering a lot of that type of stuff. But uh, we're looking at forward PEs, okay? For the S&P 500, we're looking at large caps here, mid caps here, small caps here, all right? So... The interesting thing about looking at forward P's is this is the assumption of analysts looking at the companies over the next four quarters, okay? Now, where some good news comes in is we have seen a lot of companies beating earnings. And if this continues to play out through the next four quarters, then maybe these forward P's are actually too high. Maybe they're actually down here or lower if the companies can all be much more profitable than what is expected, okay? So if you're looking at this, definitely large caps look high. The only kind of, I guess you can say, um, comfort you can get out there is kind of the feeling of, okay, yeah, they're a bit high now, but you know, what if these companies are actually much more profitable than expected? Because we're already starting to see that a bit. Maybe forward P's aren't nearly as high as they might show on face value because this is what analysts are coming up with. And, and you guys know, if you've been following me a long time, analysts and I go to war all the time. Like, you know, they think it's going to be one number. I think it's going to be another number. I'm usually right. And it's just the way it is. But you know, I don't know. Needless to say, at the end of the day, large caps are high, okay? They're high. Because even if this is, you know, let's say they come in better, maybe you're still at a 20 or so, and even a 20 is pretty high for large caps. So there definitely is this movement towards safety still at the moment in the market, okay? Large caps are high. Mid caps, more interesting. So imagine this number is a little bit high. Maybe it's a little bit closer to here. Okay, we're kind of in line. So mid caps are looking more interesting, I think, than they have been previously. Mid caps are trading at 19.8. And once again, I would not be surprised if a lot of mid caps report a lot better earnings than are, than are expected over the next four quarters. So I wouldn't be surprised if the true, the true S&P 400 mid cap forward P is actually about an 18 and a half right now or an 18.3. And if we're at an 18.5, 18.3, we're toward definitely the higher range, but it's not as extreme. We're kind of in a 2017, 2014 type range, which you're still pushing it up there, but it's not like it's insane, okay? So that's where things get pretty interesting. Where things get much more interesting is actually down here. You remember, we just saw you know small stocks getting hit, Russell 2000 recently, okay? A lot of people are definitely still a little fearful of the small caps, the, the smaller companies in general. Look at this, S&P 600 small caps trading at 20.2. And this is another number. I could see this being anywhere from 18.4 to about 19.1 as far as small cap uh, forward PEs here. And so, I mean, even here, you're kind of already looking in line with the, some of the upper ranges. But I mean, if you're in an 18, 19 range, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're in the upper range, but it's not like you're looking like insane because we've gone over these charts in the past where it's looked ridiculous, right? And it's looked like, oh my gosh, it's off the charts. I can't say, you know, it's necessarily going to be off the charts, especially with these two. I definitely still feel large caps are overvalued as a, you know, as a whole. It doesn't mean every single stock that's a large cap is overvalued, but I still feel like they're overvalued as a whole. Mid caps, small caps, much more interesting, especially if these companies can come in with better earnings than are expected. And that's definitely very much a possibility, okay? 
Now, this is this is interesting, okay? So this was done on the, the, the first, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have an updated one, but the market hasn't moved that much since then, so it might be just slightly lower. But what we're looking at here is pay ratios, price to earnings growth. So what are you paying for your, your earnings growth, essentially? And right now, the pay ratio is at 1.3. So that's not high. That's actually not high at all. So we're in this, this situation where we're looking at large caps. Forward P's look high. Yet we look at price to earnings growth on a price to earnings growth ratio. And we're at 1.3, which looks rather low. And so this is where you get this conflicting data out of the stock market where it's like, okay, you know, which way are we going here? We're we about to go up. We're we about to go down because uh, price to earnings growth looks cheap. I mean, if the market was to drop a bunch more, and earnings growth still stays strong, like, you know, the, the price to earnings growth is going to go down even more. And then it just looks like, you know, silly down, right? So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're at a very interesting inflection point right now where four P's look, look high, especially on large caps, and price to earnings growth looks very low. Interesting time period we're going through right now in the stock market, needless to say. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, right? We got a reopening of the economy in a massive way. We still got a lot of cheap money sloshing around, but then there's not going to be necessarily the next big stimulus wave. And so that's kind of drying up and dying. But then you got the economy open back up. Man, it's, it's, a, it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. Then we hear Caesars and Wynn saying business is already starting to return and it's going to about to get crazy. Woo. Okay. So, this is a chart Brian sent me here, okay? So he has his, his arrows here and things like that. Now, I'll play you the, he sent me a two minute audio message. So I'm gonna play that for you guys. We'll, we'll look at this, we'll talk about this, and then I'm gonna actually show you um, essentially the scary chart. We'll get into the scary chart. But this is coming from Coach Brian here and this is what he has to say. He can probably explain this a lot better than I am because this is his chart. This is what he sent me today. So I know you're not like super into technicals here, but this is kind of where I think it's even pointing out to like a little more beginner people, it makes total sense to them. So you see the green line there, that's a 20 day moving average. And what I like to do is I like to kind of track, you know, the, the 20 day, which is a green one, the yellow is the 50, the blue is 100, the pink is 200. But the key thing is, you know, if you look at the SPY, which is the S&P 500 index fund, um, you know, if it's floating high above the 20 day moving average, you know, I'm typically not going to be buying any key assets that are in S and P 500, because I feel that it's not the best valuation point there. There could be better buy points on it. But when you see the SPY like diverging far away from the 20 day moving average, if you kind of see like, you know, if it's holding parallel to it, let's say that's just a constant healthy bull market, it's gonna have its little minor pullbacks. But what I like to say is if you get the microphone effect where it kind of starts diverging away, like from the 20 day moving average and it starts flaring upwards, that's typically where you get that sharp buying, you know, day after day, like we're seeing right now. Like I have three arrows on here. You look on the far left, it's microphoning off the green line and it just needed a hard pullback to kind of consolidate, reset, and then away we go. The second one, same thing. You saw it kind of diverging there. It was only a matter of time before it was going to pull back there. Um, and that's kind of where I was seeing all these indicators where, you know, I've been telling the group this week, like, look at the third one to the far right. We hit the all time high at the moment right right now. So we're at all time highs in the S&P 500, you know, SPY is almost at 410. We're getting that microphone effect where it's flaring off of there. You look at the past couple of weeks where, you know, well, past couple of months here where it's, you know, it's kind of flared up there. It's pulled back a bit, but it's been kind of tracing this nice upward trend here. But what I like to say is, you know, you want to kind of start making your buy points on certain assets when you see the overall S&P 500 dipping down if your stock is an S&P 500. Um, but, you know, you can also take a look at the QQQ if it's a very, you know, if it's a tech heavy play, like if you're looking at some kind of fang stock or semiconductors, things such as that, I'd probably focus on a little bit more of the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ index. But for the, like this instance here, you can kind of explain it as if you look at how the daily chart here is kind of diverging from the moving averages and say, you don't have to be super technical, but it's good to make these kind of observations of, you know, compared to a 20 day average, you can see where it is really taken off. It's kind of going on a nice upward trajectory. It's very bullish, but a lot of times what happens is these kind of more blow offs, they 
they need a consolidation to come back to reality, kind of cool off, consolidate, and then kind of continue on if we're going to continue in a bull market. All right, so what did we learn there? Uh, we should learn a few things. Uh, Brian's too smart and I'm too dumb, maybe. <laughs> what did he say? I don't know what he said, man. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I think in the uh, simplest terms possible is what Brian was trying to say is, you know, we got this big upward move. We're just kind of gone on SP 500. And now we're kind of due for a consolidation, maybe a little drop dip in the market, a little pullback, and then another move up after that. So, you know, whether that happens, uh, it remains to be seen, but I can definitely understand what he's kind of saying. Cause you do kind of get these ma- Once you get that massive move, generally you kind of get it followed with a, a down tick there. But you know, me, I'm, I'm pretty simple, man. I look into stocks. I, I try to find companies I love. I look at the valuation. I look at the financials, I look at the management team. I look in the business inside. Now, if it's an attractive price, I buy it. If it goes down, I buy more and then I sell out, you know, years later for a lot of money. Uh, I'm a, I'm a simple man, but I, I will say, when it comes to technicals, and although I'm not, definitely not the biggest fan of technical data and things like that, you got to understand there's a lot of big funds and investors that do trade off technical data. And so if they see a certain thing in the stock, the stock market, they will pull back money, which then basically causes a market to go down in the short term. So there is something, I think, to be said about technical data. Because a lot of big funds and a lot of big investors, they do put weight in this, right? Uh, Brian's a big investor. He's got you know substantial amounts of money in the market. He would definitely count as a, a you know a, a, you know a good sized player as an individual just in the market. Never mind funds and whatnot. They, a lot of them look at this type of data and they'll see something like this and they'll be like, okay, time time to pull back a bit. Let's take some profits here and there. Let's let's not put as much cash in the market. It ends up kind of being its own self-fulfilling prophecy because then next thing you know, over a few weeks span, a month span, two months span, market kind of downtrends, doesn't really do much, right? Just kind of consolidates. And then all of a sudden they look at the technical data and they say, okay, we kind of reached the bottom here, time to buy, buy, buy. And then as they're buying up, obviously it causes the market to go up. So yeah, I think that's kind of the, the way to look at technical data. And for all the folks that understood that on a high level, congratulations to you because you are too dang smart. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So this is the one chart that I think is a scary chart. Okay. This is the one I would call scary. Um, so this was something Brian also sent me over. And what we're looking at here is the VIX, the volatility index. All right. And I think what is most scary about the VIX, by the way, this is like a two-year chart. So this is looking back at the uh, kind of the Rony Rona time, in which look at that volatility. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, for all you guys that were in the market, you know what that was like. Okay. That was just absolute chaos and craziness. Just craziness. Okay. But what is scary here is the fact that the VIX is the lowest it's been in the longest time. Okay. Now you can say, well, there's uh, you know more certainty in the economy, things opening back up, uh, corporate earnings getting back on track, and, and people feeling comfortable about that. Um, there could be political reasons why people feel more comfortable in the market at the given moment and things like that. So I can definitely understand why VIX could be down right now and why there's just really no volatility in the market. There's no real big shakeups in the market right now. It's kind of a, a quote-unquote boring time in the market because we're not seeing any drama really. We're not seeing a Dow spike 700 and then the next day is down 800 and the next day is up 9. We're not seeing anything like that right now. It is just a, a very boring market. We just looked at what the market's doing today. It's just like, eh, 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 eh. it's not really doing much. And so when I see this, it, it, it actually scares me a little bit because it's just, it's a ticking time bomb, essentially. It's just, I mean, you, the, the thing is, we don't know when this, when the, the VIX is going to spike back up. We do know it will spike back up. It happens every time. It'll go through these periods of time when it's just, there's, there's nothing really going on and there's just like calmness and there's just a lot of chillness. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you get a massive amount of volatility. And you never know what that next thing is going to be that's going to cause it, right? I mean, look at this volatility. No one ever saw this one coming, right? The Rony Rona, once in a 100-year health event. And look what happened, okay? Now, that's an extraordinary situation there. That doesn't always happen, right? Uh, that's, that's few and far between. But it does happen, needless to say. And so... You know, I I don't know if we'll see any type of spike like this anytime soon when it comes to volatility in the stock market. 
But what I do know is these are definitely very possible and we will have these type of moments where something happens and it gets the market in a real negative cycle and it pushes stocks down in the short term. Maybe corporate tax, uh, you know, corporate tax hikes or something like that could be the cause of it. Um, where maybe all of a sudden, you know, people get freaked out in the short term. Oh, wait, wait, maybe corporate taxes are going to, you know, spike to 28%. And then all of a sudden, maybe you have another negative thing that just comes out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, people are all on that. All of a sudden, gas prices shoot up. And all of a sudden, you know, stocks are getting hammered because, you know, they're having to pay so much for energy costs, right? There's so many various factors at play. But I, I can tell you every single time, you know, the VIX chills out for a good amount of time, which right now it's just been chilling out and it's just super, super low. Very, very shortly after, within a few weeks, if not a month after that, all of a sudden something happens and next thing you know, boom, 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 VIX spikes up again and all of a sudden you get some real volatility in the market. You just never know what, what's actually coming. You just know it's going to come. So um, that's the situation we're in right now. I feel most comfortable actually when we're going through a time period of volatility because when you're going through it, you know, uh, hey man, it's about to chill out, right? It's like you're going on a roller coaster and you're at the scariest part of the roller coaster. You know like, okay, I'm at the scariest part now. It's going to get better from here. It's going to be more chill from here, right? Same exact thing with the VIX, man. When you're, when you're in the midst of it, and this one was obviously an extreme example, but when you're in the midst of it, it you know you know things are going to chill out and everything's going to calm down. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this as always. I hope you got some good value out of this looking at the markets, ratios, uh, charts. We looked at a little bit of everything in this. So if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up button. That helps us out huge in the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate all you guys for being here. Much love as always. If you want to apply for the private stock group, that will be uh, basically a pin comment down there. Much love, guys. Peace.